And apparently what had happened was me and my roommate had both blacked out at the same time and refused to leave without each other because we were like, there's no way he's getting home by himself. Hello, friends. Today I'm joined by another friend, Pranay Vemulamada. Pranay and I go way back, back to the Exeter days. I've been slowly making my rounds through my old dorm and then we'll slowly branch out to more Exonians and uh, Yale friends and things like that. So maybe, Pranay, you could just go ahead and introduce yourself. Who are you? Where are you from? And where'd you go to college? What'd you major in? Just the basics. All right. Uh, I'm Pranay. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I, uh, I went to the University of Pennsylvania and I graduated with a degree in economics. All right, man. I'm going to ask you a, a spicy question. There's a lot of high schoolers right. on the panel. Yeah. How did you get into Penn? Yeah. So when it comes to Ivy League college admissions, I think the biggest thing to remember is that it's entirely random. There's nothing you do because at, at that point, at a certain point, you're, to be frank, not different from a lot of other kids. And it comes down to, you know, they only have a certain number of spots. And are you lucky enough to get one of them? Because like a lot of kids will have a perfect SAT score, 4.0 GPA, hella extracurricular. Can I, can I curse? A lot of extracurriculars. And at that point, the things that are setting you apart are the like um, holistic stuff, which sounds cheesy, but it's like your essay and your interview are like super important because your resume on paper is going to be the same as thousands of other kids. So it's like, are you lucky enough to stand out in those people's eyes that are reading like 50 applications a day. Well, that's an interesting idea. I mean, how much of the process do you think is due to luck and how much of it was your own personal merit or just personal merit in general? Yeah, I mean, obviously a huge part of getting to that point of getting to that, like being actually seriously considered is, you know, succeeding and doing well in high school, you know, like doing well with your grades and having good extracurriculars and your recommendations and all that. Like, that's obviously super important, but that just gets you through the door, kind of. The thing that pushes you over the edge is just proving yourself to be something, it's like someone unique. Because colleges at this point are running, like, you know, at this point in our society are running a business, kind of, right? They want to make money. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they, do, they don't do that by just accepting everyone that's perfect on paper. So they're looking for people that are special. And the only way that you can do that in our college application process is through making yourself stand out in your interview or your essay or some unique factor that makes you look different. So it's it's like half luck in that you get your application to stand out, but also it's like, you know, there are things you can do to make yourself look unique. Okay, gotcha. So maybe you can talk a little bit about this transition from Exeter to Penn. Was that difficult? Was it easy? You know, how are they similar or different? It wasn't particularly difficult or easy. It was just weird. Um, going from a small school with like a thousand kids where you kind of knew everyone, even if you didn't really know them, to a big school like Penn, which is like 10,000 undergrads. In the way, and that like, you know, our classes at Exeter were really small. And then now I was in like 100 person lectures. We lived on our own. I lived on, you know, we, I was there for three years at Exeter. So, you know, we had those years of experience of living on our own under our belt and all the other freshmen didn't. So in that way, it was like, oh, I'm like a little more mature than everyone else, which is a weird feeling because, you know, it's college. So you should be going through all this at the same time. But we had that experience of living on our own under our belt and kind of like growing up, not like at home. And so like that was super weird. And then the biggest thing was readjusting to pace because the pace at Exeter was breakneck, like like 100% pedal to the metal, like never taking a break. And then college was slower in that you didn't have classes nine to five every day, right? And you were in these big lectures and you would get homework. You wouldn't really get homework in most classes, right? Your only grades would be like three exams a semester. And it was like, okay, I have to learn how to pace, you know, set my own pace in order to not fall behind. So that was a big adjusting fact. Like I had to, I had to learn how to adjust to that. And that was the toughest part, I think, for me of transitioning from Exeter to Penn. So, I mean, that, that sounds like a the academic transition. What about the social transition? Transition was weird because <laughs> it, at Exeter, the, your dorm was like who you spent 12 out of 24 hours a day with after check-in until classes in the morning. Like, like you were locked in with these 50 other boys. In college, your dorm is just 
who you're living near. You can be friends with them if you want to, but you don't have to. And I got really lucky in that I went to Penn with someone else from our year and we got really close. And so in that way, you know, I, I had someone who I was friends with to at least know I like I knew somebody. If I didn't, I think it would have been a lot harder because like I said, it's like 10,000 people at that school. And at some point it's like, when do you take the leap and just walk up to someone and introduce yourself? Uh, which I was never good at, still not very good at. But yeah, I think one of the biggest things that helped me make friends was joining like social organizations. I joined the newspaper my freshman year to the photo department. And some of my best friends are now, you know, people that I met there, people that I didn't really like that much when it first started. But, you know, now they're now they're some of my best friends. I lived with them for like a couple of years. Like, yeah. In terms of social situation. Yeah. I mean, like college is college, right? Like you're going to meet so many people. Some of those people will stick. Some of them won't. It It's kind of up to you how you want to go about your four years. You can. I had friends that, you know, put their heads down and didn't do anything for four years. They never went to parties. They never went, like went to social functions. Like, you know, they put their head down for four years. They studied and now they're working in jobs or going to a grad school. And like, that's totally up to you. You can do that if you want to. Or you can take it easy and do an easy major and go to parties every weekend and make a lot of friends. And, you know, you can make connections that way at a school like Penn, which is really pretty professional. Everyone was looking to the future. A lot of friendships end up being like networking, like you're, you're, you're meeting people that know of internships or you're or they have done internships in the past. And, you know, we'll be like, we'll give you information about them and stuff like that like yeah so it's kind of up to you as to how you want to ride your social life you don't have to do greek life if you don't want to you can do greek life if you want to greek life can be a, a good support network uh if you want it but you don't need it gotcha can you tell us a little bit more about the pen culture so you mentioned it was pretty pre-professional um you yeah know, what yeah talk a little bit more about that i'm curious yeah i mean pen itself yeah the the culture of pen was really focused on what you're going to do after college. So it was like people would be going through their four years at Penn with the intention of, I mean, not everyone, obviously, but most people would be like, I'm going to go through these four years at Penn with the intention of getting a job right out of college. And I know what my career path is going to be. And if I don't know what my career path is going to be, I'm going to know by the time I have a diploma in my hand. And so a lot of a lot of conversation topics would be, you know, what are you going to do this summer in terms of your job? Or like you would, when you meet someone, you'd be like, oh, what's your major in the way that college is, but you know, most college interactions when you meet someone is like, oh, like, you know, what's your name? Where are you from? What's your major? But this would also be like, because Wharton was such a big part of culture at Penn because, of, you know, I think like 25% of the kids were in Wharton uh, and Wharton itself is a business school and it's pretty pre-business and that most kids will graduate and go immediately into the workforce. Do you have any like Penn stories? Do you have any like Penn moments? What would be considered a very Penn moment? Penn moments. I don't know if it was unique in terms of colleges or even in terms of Ivy Leagues because most kids at Ivy Leagues are tryhards right mm -hmm. but I had a lot of just kind of like real moments of human connection that I didn't expect like there would be times where you'd get like super emotional with one of your friends it's like you know we, we've never connected at that level before and I think that was pretty I don't know if that was super it was a pen moment but it felt pretty like antithetical to that pre-professional culture that I was talking about just like being able to know someone that deeply in a culture that is all about mm. what you're going to do after yeah it sounds a little bit like oxymoronic a little bit but yeah you know, I found the same thing at Yale people were always well, I think that at Yale it was people were pre-professional but they kept it like very under the radar like they didn't want you to know that they were applying to like tons of stuff and then magically opportunities they would just like get um an offer I mean you know people don't really want to brag they're not like d-bags or like a-holes about it but I mean do you remember a specific interaction like when you were you felt really close to pen friend how did that happen i think a, a question that i had a lot when i was going into college is like how do you get close to other people and i had problems like opening up so how did that how did that happen for you was it with um like a, a yeah friend? it's kind of just like what something i found was that after you embarrass yourself in front of someone you're somehow so much closer to them there were a lot of moments in college where i would like you know make bad decisions 
And then the next morning I would wake up and be like, wow, what happened last night? Like, I can't believe I did that. And I would meet my friends who I, you know, freshman year, I wasn't particularly close to them. I was just, you know, we were in that beginning stages of friendship where you're like kind of pretending to be someone you're not. Mm. And then it's like Halloween freshman year. And you're like, you wake up the next morning on November 1st and you're like, something happened last night and I'm not happy about it. And I'm a little bit embarrassed. And so you put your head down and you walk into the, you know, the dining hall with your friends. And then it's like going to war, right? It's like you, the, the, after you come back from war, you have something to bond with your friends over. And it's like, wow, that was so embarrassing what I did last night. They'd be like, haha, yeah, did you want to hear about this embarrassing thing that I did last night? I think that was really just like <laughs> how most of my friendship started with me embarrassing myself in front of someone that was kind of a stranger. Yeah. And then once you're already friends with someone, then it's like just opening the gateway to like pen. I, 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 I spoke about pace before and how everything was slower and that was academically but like everything moved pretty fast at Penn still and it felt like four years just flew by but there were other would sometimes be these like slower moments where you're on a frat house porch during a party right and like there's no one else there because everyone's in the backyard and it's just you and your friends just kind of just like sitting there quietly and then someone will say something and you'll have that or it's like you're in the library during final season and everyone around you is super anxious and stressed out but it's like you and another close friend or like your study group are in either like a corner or a small room together and it's just like those like slower kind of like time frozen moments that I think really made me closer to some of the people that I call my best friends now you know like there were there were times freshman year where like I would be up until me and my friends would be up until like 7 a.m wow just studying not because we had to but just because like we could and it was we got really close because it would you know it was one of those slower moments where it was just us in a study room messing around on youtube like like we could have gone to bed way earlier but it was like why would we do that when we can spend time with each other well i want to return back to um an interesting point you brought up which was a shared embarrassment or shared shame and yeah. what was your most embarrassing moment at Penn. I think the most embarrassing moment I had at Penn that like was in public in front of people. Well, there's okay, I guess there's two. Both of them are blackouts, right? Because that's when you embarrass yourself is when you actually don't have control over your action. And one of them was my I think sophomore year. We we have these things at Penn called BYOs, which is bring your own bottle, right? Where restaurants in Philly will let you bring in your own alcohol so that they don't have to have a liquor license. Like it's like you're paying for it yourself and you're just bringing it. And so like, that's a big part of the social culture of Penn is like doing these BYOs. I mean, you don't have to drink, right? A lot of kids don't drink, but it's just one of those things where you're going out to dinner as a group. I had one, the beginning of my either sophomore or junior year where we it was we were doing one for the photo department of the newspaper that I was a part of and we were welcoming the freshmen and I got extremely intoxicated to the point where you know it was a kind of embarrassing I was like loud and stuff and so we left to go to a friend's party after that it was like a birthday party and I went there and some like one of them had like green tea shots which was the first I had ever heard of that and that was delightful Right. And I don't remember anything after picking up a Dixie cup. And apparently what had happened was me and my roommate had both blacked out at the same time and refused to leave without each other because we were like, there's no way he's getting home by himself. And the other, you know, my roommate was like, there's no way he's getting home by himself. And so we walked each other back to our dorm, both thinking that the other one was too black out to do anything. But in reality, we were both just, you know, not in control of our actions. But we somehow made it home safe. That was a yeah, that was a really nice moment. And then another time was my junior year with my friend's 22nd birthday. It might have been her roommate's 22nd birthday. I don't remember clearly, but I had gone there. And honestly, it's not much of a story because I don't remember much of what happened. But I do remember my roommate having to, a different roommate, having to walk me home and me just being loud and obnoxious in the middle of campus. And just the next morning being like, how did I get home last night? And them just, you know, saying out telling me outlandish stories trying to get me to believe that I had done something just absolutely inexcusable the night before and I know that didn't happen because I know myself and I would never but it's still a running joke where they'll be like hey you know remember when you did this that night hmm. and I'll be like no I know very well that you walked me up the sidewalk and put me to bed because <laughs> there's no way you would have let me do something that uh, embarrassing oh man that first story was so sweet where the two of you are blacked out and you guys won't abandon yeah. each other that is so yeah, just coming back to campus together that is neither so of us awesome. yeah so maybe you can talk a little bit more about party culture at Penn in general like I think there's so many high schoolers when you and I were in high school like we had no idea what a college oh, I really yeah. party looked like 
how many of them are on campus? What is it, you know, where does it take place? How many people are there? Partying culture at Penn is kind of up to you in that you could go to frat parties if you want, or you can just have a smaller chill hangout with your friends. And I think it's also like freshman and sophomore year, it was like, oh, we got to go to like four different frat parties a night and, you know, make our rounds. And then junior and senior year, it was like, I actually don't want to do that because it's not as much fun as it used to be. I want to spend time with my friends, just maybe buy a bottle of wine or two and split it or or like a bottle of vodka, whatever, (laughs) depending on how, how crazy you want to go. But it was like, once you make your group of friends and you like spending time with each other and you can buy alcohol legally, it's like, why bother going to parties because I know what I want to do and it's spend time with my friends and I can do that in our homes or you know we could go out to dinner or something um so it's up to you and I know a lot of kids start like I a lot of kids started doing that freshman year too because it's like if you don't enjoy partying which you will know after your first party then why do it right there's no pressure to do it because no one's going to be like oh you're so lame you didn't go to a frat party last night you stayed home and studied you loser it's like no because like uh (laughs) you do what you enjoy doing greek life at penn is like not as big as it is at some other schools because it's like if you want to make it your focus like if you want to spend all your time doing greek life stuff you can do that if you don't want to interact with greek life a single time in your four years at penn you can also do that because it's a big school and you don't ever have to step into frat row social culture wise it's what you make of it you don't ever have to drink a drop of alcohol if you don't want to. The BYOs that I was talking about, you it's just going to dinner with a group of your friends. You don't have to drink. You can even just go to dinner without alcohol, which is, you know, a wild concept. Yeah, it's what you make of it. Gotcha. So like on average, do you think people, how often do people go out? Um, it depends on per, per person. I mean, how often did you go out to parties and stuff? Yeah, I mean, like freshman year, I went out a lot. I went out like almost every weekend, uh, except for like midterms and final season. Same. But then like starting sophomore year and then especially junior and senior year, it was like, why would I go out to frat parties when I'm at, you know, I can drink about, you know, a couple glasses of wine at home with my friends and watch TV. Like this is so much more enjoyable to me. And so I stopped going out as much. I, you know, you still go out for like major college holidays, like Halloween, St. Patty's Day, like that kind of stuff. Those are, those are the big ones. But, uh, you know, at, at some point it's like, I have done my, 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 I paid my price. I've done the frat parties and not as much fun as they used to be. So I'm not going to do them anymore. Some kids party until they graduate. So it's like, yeah. those are, those are rare species though. <laughs> I would say that <laughs> right. that is not representative of the best. At some point, your liver is not what it used to be when you were 18. It does, yeah, you can't do it anymore every weekend i was like <laughs> yeah i can't believe that there was there was the partying and then there was the studying and i was like how did i even manage to balance those like two sides it was, right. it was crazy yeah um, but speaking about fun you know what would you say is your most fun most treasured pen memory was it at a party or was it something else something wholesome what would you say was like your highest high mm-hmm. at pen fun yeah, my most fun memory is very clear to me. It's sophomore year, Labor Day weekend, where we went out to the Hamptons to a house that my parents, my friend's parents had rented. And we just spent Labor Day weekend there. And it was, yeah, it was one of the most like special times because it was like, we're out of Penn's bubble. So it's, you know, just mm-hmm. us hanging out and her, you know, her parents were there, but they were super cool. So they, you know, cooked us dinner and stuff and it was great. And, played mini golf and it was and went on the beach and it was like that was super special to me because it was you know I've had a hard time making friends in the past that was like the first time where I was like like these people are my ride or dies like I really enjoy spending time with them and they obviously enjoy spending time with me because they invited me to be here that's so sweet nice I, I mean guys it's really hard to graduate from college and not have friends like it's pretty I, yeah I, it's it's impossible like, <laughs> so people will force that. themselves into your lives it yeah is, did you did you find your best friends like your first year or was it later like second third fourth year yeah i mean my like the only way that you could go through college without making friends is by staying in your room not going to classes and not even going to the dining hall because like i made friends everywhere like i had my friends from exeter i had friends in the newspaper and i had friends from classes it's impossible to not meet people that you instantly click with whether or not you know you can friends may not last the four years they might but you'll always be making new friends. You'll always have your old friends. It's just, it's impossible to not. Because yeah, like like people will force themselves into your lives without <laughs> you even realizing. Like <laughs> I never expected to spend 
so much time with some of these people and it was like suddenly we're living together <laughs> it was like <laughs> okay like what uh because i thought you know i had a single my freshman year and i was like yeah. this is perfect i love living by myself i never want to and then sophomore year rolls around and i'm living with three other people mm. and it's like uh, all right like i guess this is my life now because somehow you have pushed your way into my world in a way that I didn't expect but I don't hate it's just the way that the architecture is designed of college it's it's impossible seriously yeah. so switching gears a little bit maybe you could talk a little bit about the academics you were an economics major was that easy hard how did that compare yeah, I was I was a little bit dumb in that I did pre-med classes and economics that was just asking for so much <laughs> I put so much pressure on myself where I didn't have to but I think it was really fun doing two different things at the same time because they're really different fields of study. I really liked economics and so that's why I didn't, you know, I kept it on. I, I applied to Penn as an economics major and I really do like econ. The way that most majors work, at least at Penn, was like your intro classes at the beginning of your four years are these big lectures. As you progress higher and higher into the major, you start doing these like smaller kind of seminars. And those were a lot of fun because it was like a lot more specialized. Like I took a class on like health insurance my junior year, which was like insane, but a lot of fun. And then I did a class on like, it was like international economics, right? It was like how the economy works in different countries. And that was a lot of fun too. So it's like these like super specialized classes. Yeah. And then I did like my pre-med requirements. I did a bunch of chemistry classes and that was like really hard, but a lot of fun still having so much to learn and learning it is always a lot of fun. a lot of kids don't know what they want to do coming into college they might have a rough idea you know what kind of field whether you want to do humanities or stem or something or like business or something else like but college is such an open box of stuff that you can play with like it, it, it's there's so much stuff to do so much stuff to learn that you kind of can't avoid having fun with whatever you choose. And that was the biggest thing was like my decision to stick with economics is that I had a lot of fun just learning uh, whether or not it was hard, you know, like at some points it was hard because learning things that, that at a high level can be difficult, but it's like, if you're not having fun with it, then do something else. I, mm -hmm. I was having fun my whole four years learning what I learned. So what does, I mean, you were having fun. You were also working hard. I kind of want to know yeah. like, how hard, how hard was this dude working? What is like, what did like a typical day at Penn look like for you? Maybe you could describe like a typical weekday and also like a typical weekend. Yeah. It, college is weird in that like none of your days of the week are the same because like some mm -hmm. days I would have four classes in a day and some days I'd have an, uh, like an average day would be, I'd have like two classes, one in the morning and one in the afternoon and then lunch in between. And then I'd be back in my dorm yeah it, it depends like a lot of times there was a lot of study with like pre-med classes it's a lot of just reviewing what you've done in class so I did a lot of that usually after classes and then in the evenings it would I, you know I'd kind of chill out if I had to study more I would study more it's like because like what I said about pace right you're setting your own pace which also means you're setting your own how much you want to study if you don't want to study all day and you you're happy with getting like b pluses b's like you can do that right because c's get degrees like yeah you can breeze your way through four years of college if you want to and you don't have to take hard classes you don't have to take you know the high level classes you can just do your major requirements and do the bare minimum and graduate and no one's going to stop you because you're setting your own pace mm. no one's going to be like hey you have to work harder if you're if you're passing you're good right if you want to do better and you want to go to grad school or you want to have something to show that hey I worked hard in college then you can work hard in college and so a lot of days I would spend studying if I felt like I had to right that was the biggest thing is that you know I'd wake up one morning and be like all right I have an exam in a week so I'm going to start studying today like and so it would be like that week I would be like this is you know I, I come home from class and I study until dinner time and I eat dinner and then maybe I'll fuck around for a couple hours and then go to sleep right like the weekends were you know way more chill just because weekends would be like the time where i can like see my friends maybe go out to the city center city in philly like go out to lunch or to dinner and then study if i had to otherwise just do my normal homework and take it easy my junior year i started working in a lab uh in the children's hospital of philadelphia oh that's awesome and so, yeah you know that would be a couple hours where i would go down there and 
learn how to do lab work. And that was a lot of fun. Like I said, you know, don't do stuff if it's not fun. It's college. It's the time for you to figure out what you want to do for the rest of your life. Okay. We might wrap this up in a few more minutes. I guess I have uh, one or two more questions for you. One of my last questions is, Pranay, if you had to change like one thing about your pen experience, like what would it be? Would you have changed, you know, your academics, the socials, extracurriculars? What would you, you know? Yeah, I think I had a rough time freshman year mm. in terms of adjusting. And I think if I went back, I would, I would know what to do differently. But I mean, I mentioned it before, like the hardest part I had a tr- trouble adjusting to was having to drive myself, basically, like, you know, my hands are on the driver's wheel now, whereas up till now, it was my teachers or my parents kind of just like shoving me forward. And the biggest thing in college is that there's no one to do that. Anymore. Like you're driving your own car, knowing what I know now, I would probably have done things differently. But I think it was also really beneficial for me to learn that and not beneficial, but it was it was it was good to learn how to do that even if it was at the cost of you know a semester worth of grades how did you like motivate or drive yourself your first year I mean, what was it was that? really it was really hard right like I, I, there were certain points where I was like I need to transfer out I can't do this but it, it, at, at some point you kind of hit your stride and you don't even realize it you're just like you're setting your rhythm and your pattern and your study habits and you're balancing your work life and at, at one point you wake up one morning and you're like I can do this actually yeah I I am good at this so it's nothing that you do actively besides just making an effort to try and work hard yeah that first year transition is rough especially like going from exeter 12 12 person classrooms to like melting in 100 person lecture halls everything is like those pre-required courses i mean i can imagine it was only worse for you if you had to do like orgo and intro yeah all that kind of stuff it's like literally like hard to find motivation sometimes there but did you study more your first year you think you like like those first two years you studied more your last two years when the courses got more difficult i think i was better about studying my first two years you kind of learn how to study but by the time you hit your junior year so then it's it's not like you're studying less but you're more more efficient with it yeah I just I just studied more earlier because I felt like I had to know literally everything but when when you hit junior year like oh I know what I need to know for this class so I'm going to study that so yeah you just get better and more efficient and yeah that makes that makes total sense Pranay what's your long-term plan now that you've graduated are you thinking of medical school are you thinking of doing something in econ yeah, that's a great question. You know, I realized after I graduated that like I wasn't sure if medical school was right for me anymore. Applying to jobs. I've been at home for the past year uh, since I graduated. Spending time with my family is nice. I'm still looking forward. I, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what I want to do yet. And I am running out of time to figure it out, but I think I will with no problem. Yeah. I mean, you were like, we're yeah. like 23. I don't know what I want to do with the rest of my life. You know, guys, you know, as you get older, you, you kind of realize in high school, you're like, oh, I'm going to figure things out. Like now's the time to grow up. Um, I'll, you know, in college, I'll be so much more mature. Then you get to college and you have like the same mentality. You're like, wow, I still don't know anything. Like I'm yeah. still figuring things out. Oh, man whole like realization that you have when you step through the doors of your first class like nothing yeah. changed I'm still the dumb kid I was when I graduated high school like I have no idea what I'm doing and most people don't something I yeah that was a big thing what I realized was like when you do when you're talking to kids that have graduated college when you're still in college and they're like I have no idea what I'm doing in my life and you're like wait a minute you should have it all figured out like you graduated from high college you're working a job and they're like no I am <laughs> you know I'm still figuring things out too and it's like okay, like no one really knows what they're doing ever. So there's no pressure to be like, this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to do it because most people don't have that. Yeah, it was so enlightening and reassuring when I talked to seniors and they were like, we're just like you, man. And we just know what we don't want to do. Like we tried a few things and they're like, that's not for us. Yeah, that's actually actually really big is like figuring out what you don't want. There's some stuff where you just do it or you take a class on it and you're like, I hate this. (laughs) And if I never had to do this again in my life, I would be so happy. And for me, that was physics. I hate physics. And I knew that in high school too. Like physics is just, I, it's my least favorite science, which is weird because most, most STEM kids love physics, but I just, I never want to see another Newton's law problem again in my life. I'm just, I don't care for it. And it's not fun for me. I don't enjoy it. And so, yeah, that, that's also a big thing of how you spend your four years of college is figuring out what you don't want to do at all. What you have absolutely no interest in. Yeah, just as valuable knowledge, knowing what you yeah. don't like is knowing what you do like. And you guys don't need to have everything figured out. 
at like 16, 17, 22, 23. You know, I know older, older guys who are still figuring things out. So with that in mind, Pranay, thank you so much for your time talking about Penn, your experience, econ degree, no the uh, newspaper and your wholesome blackout moments. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you at the next one. All right, guys. All right. Bye guys. Bye-bye.